Little wins, right? Yeah. I did it, and there's Tom. Secret play. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. This is for people that have a easy UHF long-range RC control system, and they also have an Arju Pilot Mega or a Pixhawk combined with a Minimo SD. Now, if you have the Minimo SD, you may have been missing the RSSI or receiver single strength indication on your OSD because it hasn't been available for a while. But I did some searching on the internet because I wanted that feature and I finally found that uh, sometime in 2014 here they did find a way to do it and it was posted on uh, DIY drones. Now one of the prerequisites for this video is that you already have the uh, latest firmware installed on your Easy UHF transmitter and your receiver. I'm actually using the JR module in my Tyrannus radio, but it doesn't matter if you have some of the other transmitters or receivers, as long as they're Easy UHF, this still applies. But you have to have the latest firmware. So I've got an actually have another video on that, but basically what you do is go to Immersion RC and download uh, the latest firmware. There's a user manual here at the top. There's firmware and then there's the Immersion RC tools. So you would supposedly already have done that and if you haven't I'll post a link to my video that I made on upgrading the firmware on the transmitters and receivers and binding and uh, so you can go there and do that first. But make sure you have the Immersion RC Tools 1.4 and the latest firmware, which I think is 1.5. While I was searching for information on the RSSI, uh, I found this post by Steve Kane on DIY Drones, and I think this was a very helpful post, so thanks, Steve. What he's got here is the basic steps we'll be doing. I actually have a bunch of links, and it's the top link, but I'll post all of these links that I used under my video. So here is my APM wiring diagram and the Arju Pilot Mega 2.6 is represented by this and this is the Easy UHF receiver. Now what we're doing is we're just going to hook up one servo cable right here for the RSSI. So I'm not going to show a lot of complicated wiring and close-ups on the bench because it's really not necessary. We just need to run one cable right here from channel 8 on your Easy UHF receiver to channel 8 on the APM. And the reason we have to use channel 8 is because the Minim OSD software or firmware only responds to channel 8 for the RSSI. Even though other channels are selectable, I guess it's a bug or something, but only one channel works and that's channel 8. So once the APM receives this information and this could be a PixHawk as well. It just goes out the Mavlink stream right here and into the Minimo SD and then if it's configured right it will display it on your ground station or your goggles. Nothing needs to be done as far as the APM. You don't have to do anything in the mission planner. Now thanks to some changes that were made on the Easy UHF receivers recently you can now do a different kind of wiring. So some of you may have this wiring for the PixHawk or for the APM 2.6 and that's it's called CPPM which just uses one cable instead of all the individual cables. So all of the different channels come over just one servo cable. And this is a combined PPM or PPM sum and that's my understanding. I don't have mine this way but some of you might so if you do, the good news is you don't have to do anything to get the uh, RSSI to work because it's channel 8's already going over this cable. So all you have to do is configure things. So no cables needed there. All right, let's get started with the configuration. So the first thing we need to do is launch Immersion Tools or Immersion RC Tools 1.4. Now, as I said earlier, you should already have your Easy UHF transmitter and receiver already upgraded to the latest firmware, which at this time is 1.5, and you should have got this 1.4 version tool with it. And 
You should already have that. If you don't, then you can see the video that I mentioned earlier, and I'll have a link under this video for it. Now, the first thing we need to do is connect the receiver by a USB to the computer. So I'm going to do that now. All right, I've just plugged in the USB cable going to the receiver. Now you choose the model that you have, and I have the uh, Easy UHF light receiver, 8-channel light. So I'm going to click that. Now I'm just going to read the settings up from the receiver to make sure it's communicating. All right, there it is. And as you see, I have version 1.5 of the firmware on my receiver, and I have the same thing on my transmitter. Now when we go to the servo mapping tab right here, you'll see all of these channels are grayed out. So the first thing we do is read the settings from the receiver for this tab. So I'm going to do that. And you can see that it filled them all in with the current values for the receiver. And then when it's done with that, what we need to do is go to the PPM slot right here and go to channel 8, pull that down, and you have to choose. So there's either, it's either going to be RSSI or link quality. Now RSSI is good, but the signal for some reason, Easy UHF inverts the signal from what you would normally see, so it's going to look inverted on your display. In other words, full signal will be zero and no signal will be a hundred percent. So there is that, but it also may not be as good as link quality for uh, discovering what's going on because link quality will tell you if there's an interfering signal. Because sometimes you might have another 433 megahertz signal interfering with your signal and uh, it will cause your signal to degrade, yet RSSI won't tell you that. It'll say, well, I got a strong signal it's got a good carrier but it doesn't you know it doesn't tell you that it's the quality's gone down so link quality is probably better anyway and it's it's not inverted and looks better on the display so I'm going to choose link quality that normally is all you need to do but I will say this if you've got an APM that's hooked up with the CPPM cable like I showed you earlier where all the PPM signals are on one cable then you need to go up here to channel 1 and put that as PPM MUX like that. So that's the only difference. But I don't have the CPPM set up, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave that as one. Just like that. So the only thing I had to change was down here. I just changed this from channel eight to link quality. Alright, now I just go ahead and upload the re the settings to the receiver. Okay, update was successful and that's basically all we need to do here. Okay, next we need to download the config tool for the Minim OSD, which comes with a character set, and also download the firmware. Now to do that we go to this link right here, which I will provide under the video. And once you get there, download this top one here, which is the latest pre-release of the config tool and also get the uh, firmware, either the copter or the plane. In my case, I'll get the plane. Okay, I unzipped my config tool and put it underneath a directory on my computer right here. And inside there, I also copied my firmware right here, the hex file, which was uh, release 719. I also have another version here that uh, was newer that you can get off of uh, DIY drones and I put a link to that under the video. I don't know if it will be available forever because somebody just posted it there but you can always get this one which works just as well. Um, the next thing we need to do is launch the config tool but okay the character set is also here I just wanted to say that that came with it with the config tool. Okay, so let's go launch the config tool. Okay, the next thing you want to do is plug your minimum OSD into the USB port on your computer. Now the way you do that is you use an FTDI to USB connector. And uh, I got mine from SparkFund. There's other ones on the internet, but SparkFund was a 
was one that worked for me. Uh, you can see that in some of my other videos. But now I'm just going to plug in that USB cable so I can connect with the minimum OSD. Okay, so that's connected now. A good idea when you do this is to immediately read from the OSD to get your current settings. And if there's an error opening the port, like I just got, pull this down and switch ports. You might have the wrong one selected. Okay, done downloading the data. Okay, now I've already got mine set up on channel 8 and and there's my min max values and my warning level that I've already set up. But when you first do it, what you probably want to do is you probably have panels set up like this. What you want to do is save all this information first. And before doing that, of course, you want to uh, turn on the RSSI. And so I've got mine right here. And if I just highlight that, you can see that it's down here at the bottom and I have it checked. So if you don't have that checked, check it now for each panel and then position it where you want it. And I did the same thing for this panel. I got it checked and positioned. Now, after you've got all that done, you can go ahead and save those panels. I'm just going to save, it's called Save Current Tab. So I save Current Tab, done. And go to the other panel, Save Current Tab. That just allows me to have my RSSI on the OSD screen. And this one I'm not going to bother saving because uh, we're going to be playing with those values. Now, just to be safe, uh, actually go over here to File, and this is to be safe. Save your OSD file to the hard drive. And I have mine saved right here under uh, link quality, so right now. So I just save that, and uh, I've previously done it, so I won't do it again. But that's a good idea to save your OSD file. Because we're now going to upgrade the firmware. So go to Options here, Update the Firmware right here. And you can see the two firmware things I have here. I'm just going to use this one. 795, but like I said, 719 will work too. And we just open that and it starts uploading. Okay, done. Now, while we're at it, let's also update the character set to go with that firmware. So here's the character set 2.4. Open that. Okay, you might have to go back to the old firmware if you get that error. So let's update the firmware again. An earlier version. I'm going to go to 2.2. Updating that firmware. So I went back to an earlier version. Okay, I'm going to try it again. Update the character set. There it is. Okay, now it's uploading. So you might have to go back to an older version of the firmware just to load the character set. So maybe it's a good idea to load the character set first on your older version before you put the new firmware on. Okay, now the character set is done. Let's go to Options and update the firmware again to the newer firmware. Now we're uploading the firmware. Okay, so now that's done. It'll usually be sitting there like this on Mavlink RSSI. What you want to do is change it to channel 8 and then it'll, it'll have some values in here that are kinda large. Just put them down as low as you can get them. I usually put like zero in there and see what comes up. So 900 and 900 is what you usually end up with. Okay, and let's put the RSSI on raw values now so we can check our radio in the off state and the on state to see what the min max is that we need to put in here. And then I'm going to 
save that tab. Okay, done writing that tab. And of course we previously saved these other tabs right here with the RSSI information. Okay, so that's all we need to do there. Now we just need to get our min-max values from our display. So right now I've got my OSD on and I'm just uh, looking at these link quality values. Now this is raw data because we selected the raw data checkbox in the OSD config tool. So just looking at the raw data So that's with the radio on, and now I've turned it off, and you can see it's drifting down. So 10, 10, 5, 7, no, 10, 7, 4, I guess, is the low value. And turning the radio back on, what do we get? Turn it back on, we get 17.93 or 9.4. Okay. So those are the two values we're going to need. Okay, now that we got our raw link quality values, we can go ahead and put them in. So let's uh, take off the check mark in the config tool here for the minimum OSD. We are now done reading the raw data. And let's put in our min max values. So the min value that I saw was 1074, and the max value was 1794. And I'll just put the warning level at 60% and make sure this is still on channel 8. I'm going to look, make sure a few other things are right. Yep, NTSC. Let's see how panel one looks. Yep, still got the RSSI there. I mean, the, yeah, it's RSSI, but I'm really reading link value. Um, so there we go. And now we'll just go ahead and save that tab. And you realize I had to take the minimum OSD off the USB cable and plug, you know, plug it back on my Ardu pilot while I was reading the raw values. But uh, there you go. Now it's plugged in and it should work. It'll come up instead of raw values, and I'll come up as a percentage between 0 and 100. So here is what our uh, link quality values look like now that it's all set up. And right now the radio is on, got 100%. And if we turn the radio off, you can see it dropping down and it goes to 0. So it's got the full range there. Now I found out that uh, sometimes it'll pop up a weird number like that. And when it writes the other values back in, it leaves a stray character left over. And that's just a bug in the uh, firmware for the minimum OSD. I've heard they're going to add a space after the percent sign to try to get rid of that. But right now you can uh, change modes if you want to, Ch change screen modes or panels and the character will go away. So that's it. That's all you have to do. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave comments under the video. And uh, hopefully this will be helpful to anyone adding RSSI to their minimum OSD on their Arju Pilot or Pixhawk if they have Easy UHF. Thanks for watching. Here,